you want to go for a ride? What the f are you doing? Let's have some fun today. Got my vaccine about half an hour ago, so I'm feeling awesome. Just gotta wait for that second shot. Last week we talked about middle first. Today I wanted to go in more in depth. I introduced the concept. I wanna show you some marker board stuff. I wanna show you some active stuff with some toys I got here to help illustrate it. And please chime in in the comments if you have anything to say, pro or con, based on what I'm teaching you. I think this makes sense. Follow along here as we walk through these three different scenarios. So we talked about this scenario last week. You got a man down beside the net, X1, he centers it out to the guy, and then he's gonna shoot it. And we talked about something I called playing the hypotenuse, or basically hugging the short side. And by coming out off the post along the short side, you never open up the guy to have a chance to score on that side. The reason why that's crucial is, if you just step to the middle deep in the net, you let the guy shoot both short side and far side. And the weakness to that is it's so impossible to stop a bing bang play if it's back against the green. As a goaltender on breakaways and many other different situations, it's nice to know where the guy's likely gonna try to score. And if you look at this situation here, the pass happens, goalie has great movement skills, great anticipation, great connecting the dots, reading the play, so he gets a good jump on it. And he comes out along this line and at no time does he open up the short side. He leaves a little bit of far side, but as he gains his depth at the same time, because he's getting angle and depth, this is getting very, very small. So when the guy does shoot it, you know it's going to that far side and he's got a very small window to hit. In the bing bang nature of this play, the shooter's not gonna think you're sort of screwing with him by holding that short side angle because you're not giving him half a net to shoot at. It's gonna be a surprise to him. It's gonna happen bang, and as a goaltender, you gotta make sure you follow that short side step out. Let's take a look at that a little bit just with my marker chat here. Same scenario. You got the puck here, the net here, and you got the goalie hugging the post right in here. Once that pass happens, you don't wanna jump to the middle because he can shoot it back against the green and he can shoot it far side. That's giving the guy two ways to score, short side and far side. What you want to do is just come straight out along that line. So as you're challenging at no point, do you ever reveal that short side. There's many ways to coach goaltenders. And currently, a lot of people are teaching a curved kind of an arc path to get to your next target. And I want to talk to you right now and explain why I don't think that's a good idea, but I don't expect you to agree with me. Listen to my proof of concept, see if it makes sense, add it in your game. But if you prefer to do how your goalie coach teaches you, or if you believe it's something different, go that way. But follow along and listen to see what we got here. We got a guy out in front of the net, He's gonna make a lateral feed across to a teammate, and then he's gonna shoot it. And if we look at the goaltender, he's at the top of the crease, squared up to the initial puck carrier. He's aware, he senses there's gonna be a pass. He gets a great jump and goes straight across to the top of the crease at the other side. Because he's got such a great jump, he can take the shortest distance. Now, if we look at that again, what they do teach in this situation is some form of a curved path to get to your new target. To me, that doesn't make sense because that's a longer journey. The shortest distance between two lines that we learned when we were in school is a straight line. And people say, well, we gotta gain the middle first in case we can't get there in time. Listen, if it's gonna be a time factor where you can't get there in time, you should be sliding anyways, not up on your edges. And I, I've yet to see a goalie able to slide from point A to point B in a curved fashion. So it doesn't make any sense. We should be always moving in straight lines. And if the play is that dangerous, you're not gonna be able to get there on your feet anyways. So on a tight play, lateral feed like we're showing you here, if it's gonna be a question of whether you get there or not, you certainly don't wanna be gaining the middle deep 
and then follow some curved path to come out and challenge afterwards because it's already going to be in the net. You need to step straight sideways, shortest distance, straight line, no curved pathways. And if you think you need a curved pathway because everything's happening so fast, you need to get a better read on the puck. You need to get better athleticism and just slide. And we slide in straight lines. That's how we do it. In the third scenario we're looking at, we got a puck up high being passed down to the back door. So you got a goaltender that's had a modified conservative challenge to the top of the crease. He's not over challenging because he's used his visual awareness to know there's a guy here. He likely knows who it is and what hand he is. And if you're smart and if you can intelligently read this play happening, you're going to be able to get a good jump on this. Now, if you get a late jump or if you don't have great athleticism, you got to push straight back deep in the net. But the better you're skating, and the better the jump you get, the further up that square line you can get with the optimal finishing point is at the top of the crease. Now, obviously, if you're a poor skater, you have to go back deep or if you get a late read on it, the better the skating skills, the better cognitive reads you make, the more you can jump out to make this tough play. This is going to be a blocking save. Once this guy one times it, you're not going to get a chance to react. So depth is crucial. And a lot of times the middle first guys are talking about getting to the middle. For me, of course you get to the middle, but if you can, always get your depth. There's very few circumstances, honestly, in a game where you're going to get caught where you have to go middle first. Does it happen? Yes. Is it a tool you need in your toolbox? Yes. But it's not an approach where you're always trying to go deep in the blue crease. And remember, if you're back in the blue crease consistently when guys are scoring, you're not being aggressive enough. Now, I don't want you out here on the white ice over challenging. Get your butt out and make these saves at the top of the crease. This is a crucial concept. Get your angle, get your depth all at the same time whenever humanly possible in those unique, rare circumstances where you haven't made a great read or where you've lacked some athleticism and you have to play deep. You know, Bob's your uncle. That's what you're going to get. Face-off's likely going to be at center ice. Here's another thing that goes into this decision on your path of travel is understanding some biomechanics. And unfortunately, not a lot of goalie coaches are versed in biomechanics. They're teaching drills, they're teaching things, they're, they're, they're following things they've learned online. But here's some biomechanical things for you that will help you decide if this makes sense. Let's talk about the sagittal axis. If I was to take a spike drive it straight down through my head and out the bottom quarters. That's the sagittal axis. And as you rotate around that sagittal axis, you're getting your shoulders square to the new target. Now, anytime you move from point A to point B, it takes time. So there's a bunch of movements involved. Watch this. If we got a puck here, like we showed in the earlier example, and the goalie's right here, and there he's square, for him to get over to this guy, he's got to get his body squared. So he's got to turn his body about that sagittal axis and then push over. That's a certain number of degrees. If he's going to try to do that curved path that they're talking about, he's got to do way more of a turn, go up and then get to the top of the crease. When you have to rotate more around your sagittal axis before you push, it takes longer. This isn't brain surgery. This isn't rocket appliances. The less you have to turn before you push, the better. And that eliminates the proprietary nature of doing that curved pathway. So understand the sagittal axis and let's head over to the table to play with my toys to more better illustrate these things I'm just talking about. Alrighty, here we got my boy Johnny Bauer and we're going to demonstrate what I talked about initially with the angle first and sort of hugging the short side post. If we take a line from that post to the puck and then we take a line from this post. What you don't want to do as a goaltender is just jump flat in the middle because now we can shoot short, short side, we can still go far side. What you want to do on this play here is come right out along this line here and at no point do you ever open up the short side. Now that might be a little bit of an aggressive challenge but if you watch it again, instead of just jumping to the middle like that and you leave both sides open, as this pass comes from the corner out to him, you get a good jump on it and you come out along this line here. So at no point does he have anything to shoot at except for that. And that will give you a good idea where it's going to be 
in a bing bang play. Bing. From here, you didn't get a good jump, you didn't get a good read on the play, and you just grabbed the middle. That's a lazy way to play it. You gotta be better than that. All right, in a second scenario, this is probably a little bit aggressive here. We've got Johnny perfectly squared up here to the puck. Got another man open over here that's gonna be receiving that pass. Now, Johnny would have known this beforehand, there's a guy open. He wouldn't have over-challenged. That would prevent him from getting over to this back door. Now, sometimes what people are being taught is to curve back and come at him like that. So you rotate, you come back through the middle, and then out like that. That little super pivot and then come back through the middle takes a long time. The shortest distance, as you know from physics, is just straight across instead of that curved path. Also, when we talked about the sagittal axis, if you have to rotate more and then go, that takes a lot longer than a simple short rotation and then push over. Now again, if you recognize what this is, what it is, it's going to be a bing-bang play. You're not going to have time to do all these curved pathways, and you're not going to be doing any of this stuff up on your feet anyways. If this pass happens in a game, it's simply going to be a pivot and a slide across, and you make your butterfly save there. If you're going to try to go back to the post, that's an awful long ways to go, and you're not making any progress with your depth. Look at this. If you go all the way back to the post, look how long that line is. If you just get over to square up to where you need to be here, this line, which is shorter, this one or this long one back to the post. You guys are smart goalies. Make your life easy. Pick the short direct pass and if it's that much of an emergency, slide. Johnny, you're doing a great job for us. So we're gonna make this pass come from way up off screen to a man on the back door down here. So the path of the pass is gonna go to him. Now, you're a smart goalie. You see that this guy's open. As soon as that pass leaves the stick, you've gotta get over to fill up this triangle. And there's a center line. You have a choice. You can pivot and go back here, here, or maybe even get up to the top of the crease. A lot's going to depend on what type of read you have and what type of athleticism. If this pass comes to the back door and all you do is just simply rotate and go back deep here, you're going to get lit up. And if you sometimes get a bad jump, that's what you're going to have to do. Or if it's a super hard pass that you didn't read, you're going to have to go deep. But ideally, less rotation about the sagittal axis, try to get out to here, or if possible, out to there. This is all gonna be dependent on how much of a read, how much of intelligent anticipation you have, and your athleticism with your lateral skating. And this is a clearly gonna be a sliding scenario because it's gonna be a bing bang backdoor play. So there's no way you're ever gonna be going back and coming through the middle of the angle. Short pivot, get over there, make the save. That's ideal if you get a great read, that's acceptable. I'm gonna take a good shot to beat you. You just go back flat like this and the guy scores, not a snipe. Not a great shot, it's because you didn't read the play and you got a lack of athleticism that didn't allow you to get angle and depth at the same time. So hopefully this helps and thank you very much Johnny Bauer. Woo